case. So based on what we have been talking about um, and you know, the, the concept of partnership in the kingdom of God, are there any uh, you know, comments, anything from your own experience you'd like to share? How you have uh, maintained that kingdom-minded, uh, kingdom-mindedness while working with others? Okay, anyone here have something to add? I was looking if uh, Sister Rupa is there, but I don't think she's on the call right now. Um, a uh, Abraham, I think Abraham just joined. Were you there in the previous session, Abraham? No, please, I just joined. Oh, okay, okay, you just joined. Okay, okay, no worries, no worries. All right, thank you. I noticed. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll just leave it open for any anybody you want to share from your experience of partnering with other ministers or while serving God. What about Kennedy? Kennedy, do you have uh, anything to add? Kennedy uh, Harrison? I came in late. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Okay, no problem. So uh, you could just mull over these things um while we move on to some of the other important aspects to consider while partnering uh in the kingdom of god so what is the the value of partnering in the kingdom of god uh partnership will build unity so it's only when we uh you know we we come across others then we agree to work with them that there is an opportunity for us to build unity in the body of Christ. So we, we have to take that step, right? And, and then the unity, uh, the opportunity for unity is available. So there's a, a wonderful passage in Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3, where it says, How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So this applies to the uh, to the the group of believers or to the a set of ministers who are working together. How good and how pleasant it is you know, when they are working together. Uh, and then you know there is a description about how it's like precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. Uh, it is like dew. It is like dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. So, you know, but as we understand this passage, we see that where brothers work together in unity or people work together in unity, we see that God is able to release his anointing. And his anointing, uh, uh, you know, touches every life which is a part of this, this um, partnership. And the last verse there, it says that the Lord commands a blessing. So commanding a blessing is like God willing to give a blessing upon these set of people. So these are the advantages, right? When we work together, we are able to uh, see that fresh anointing of God being poured out on us. We are able to see uh, God's blessing, which he has determined to give us. 
right? When there is unity. So when we partner together and we nurture unity, we can see these things happen. Uh, but again, you know, when when we talk about the positives, uh, we can also consider what things look like if there is no unity. Okay. What about the anointing? What about the uh, the blessing that God would have commanded if there is unity? We will miss out on uh, those wonderful things. So we need unity and partnership is a place where we can build unity. The next section, uh, in fact, in our uh, notes here is about the citywide church. Okay, so when we talk about the citywide church, we will look at some practical ways uh, in which we can try to uh, build this unity among the ministers of God. But uh, when we come together, there is an opportunity to have unity. Then partnership brings strength. Okay, uh, again, needless to say, the way uh, Ecclesiastes 4.12 um, says that though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. So while we stand against the devil, right? Uh, united we stand, we will be able to overcome our common enemy who is Satan, okay, the adversary. So coming together, working together, even two it says. And we know in the New Testament, that the power of agreement, when we have that united heart uh, and we agree together in the name of Jesus, there is so much power in that. So any two, we can withstand the enemy. But again, that scripture goes on to say, and the threefold cord is not quickly broken. So uh, it's like the, the numbers, as they're increasing, you, you notice that uh, there is greater strength. So when we are partnering with one another, we are stronger together. And it is really good for the kingdom of God. A partnership produces kingdom advancement. So as we said, we are able to do more together. In a team, um, everyone achieves more. That's what we say. right? So we are able to do more for the kingdom of God. I remember uh, this one uh, citywide sort of an initiative that happened in Bangalore sometime back. Now, I don't know the, the details of how it got organized and all that, but as an onlooker and a, a believer in the city, you know, I can give you some of, some of my uh, comments on what I saw. So this initiative uh, was called uh, what, uh, what Experience Change or something like that. Uh, I, I think uh, some of you were also here at that time. Uh, so in this initiative, uh, it's, it's run by uh, a particular ministry and they select um, cities and they, uh, like they, they select entire cities and they, they do promotions uh, of people's testimonies. And there was, there was a book, I think it was also called, what power to change? Oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Power to change, sorry. Power to change. So uh, in that, uh, they had testimonies of Christian people and uh, they had planned it in such a way that they would pick people from uh, that same city. So, uh, you know, the, the impact is better when people read those testimonies. And uh, advertisements were put out, you know, in many places, like you would have, would have billboards with those people's faces and you know some interesting uh, inviting statements and a um, a number where they these people uh, anyone who's watching these things can call so um, the advertisements went out and uh, uh, the the number to call also was was put everywhere anyone who is inquisitive would call that number and there was a call center which was created again Okay, and that call center would take the calls, write down the addresses, and send this book, this power to change book with people's testimonies in it, to households. So I remember that happened in 2014, I think so, here in Bangalore. And uh, a lot of churches were partnering together. And it was really interesting to see how um, a campaign, a citywide campaign, was possible. Uh, because the churches, you know, mobilize their people and uh, 
you know they were all working together so uh, i think apc was also given some set of uh, numbers or something so we had we had planned we we had teams we were going out and personally giving the books i remember myself and you know a couple of my my um, uh, friends from church we also went you know to some homes we don't even know these people but they had asked for the book so we we went door to door we gave these books okay um so i was just thinking and this was not just apc but there were so many churches involved there were some training sessions that were held in um uh, you know some convention centers large convention centers and people had come from many churches so it was amazing to see that there are so many believers who were interested to volunteer uh, in the city right so uh, when they work together you know the impact can be really large and lately uh, some of you probably have seen uh, heard about lead talks and and programs like that i'm only talking about programs okay right now so uh, we'll talk about other things in the next uh, section but some programs where i've seen uh, people working together churches working together ministries working together and uh, that causes uh, an impact in lives of people so what if people decide not to team up it's it's not possible to to reach out uh, uh, to more souls and you know do better work and be efficient be excellent and all of that so uh, it definitely helps to work together it definitely helps to advance the kingdom of god so these are all the advantages of working together and uh, we should um, you know be for it so what are some things that can hinder we've already talked about things like comparison judging uh, yeah uh, so just along those lines a few more things to add to the list uh, having a me and mine mentality we said selfish uh, ambition will hinder partnership so uh, instead of looking at god's big picture if we focus only our, on our own interests that will hinder god's work so we must be careful Uh, or uh, asking the question um, as to what our reward will be in it. Okay, so whenever we partner, like I think in the world it's true. If uh, uh, coming from our other uh, coming from other jobs, I I remember that whenever we tried partnering with somebody, it was because there was a benefit for us. There was a benefit for you know our cause or our team. That is why we were. willing to partner with that person now if we carry that same mentality into kingdom partnership where we say okay you know we will all sign up at the end of uh, this this program or you know uh, something venture <laughs> you get this and i get something else right uh, we will get this publicity uh, that that will be very unfortunate to look for a reward or a benefit or what's in it for me if i am going to get something significant uh some gain then yeah you know i will i will partner with people but otherwise you know i will not partner with people so that is not kingdom mindset yeah people are working together we can see programs being run together but what is the mindset reward what's in it for me what's in it for my ministry okay so uh, that actually hinders the kingdom work uh, and that's a wrong mindset uh, and of course we've already talked about um, comparing okay, comparing where where uh, either we say that i am better than somebody else or we put ourselves down and you know we we uh, are in self pity okay and that also is destructive because then we are not doing kingdom work we are discouraged competition competition is where uh, we try to out to the other person whatever goals whatever achievements we perceive as better than us um we want to kind of you know outnumber those uh, sermons or outnumber uh, the the congregation size or you know programs uh, that are done in the city but that is a competitive attitude 
okay, uh, trying to outdo another minister of God. These are all attitudes which will actually hinder the kingdom work. And you know, in a more direct sort of way, promoting discord. Okay. Uh, now, yes, of course, this can happen unintentionally also. You know, we bring up a comment, we say something about a minister, and that might actually you know disparage their image or their reputation and uh, cause damage, right? In the uh, partnership, in in the work that we are doing for God's kingdom. That might put down that person's ministry and cause significant damage to that person. So unintentionally, it could happen. Intentionally, unfortunate to say that you know people who engage in uh, discord intentionally, right? They might engage in things like slander, belittling, uh, or backbiting about other ministers of God, like in. Uh, like you know, when when we interact uh, uh, on the outside, everything may look good, but uh, underneath there are all these things happening. Uh, so when these things exist in the partnership, uh, it'll eat up. It's like you know termites. It just eats up that fellowship. It just eats up that partnership, uh, and it uh, ultimately destroys the kingdom of God. So causing divisions, people who are promoting discord and division uh, in the kingdom uh, will cause you know will destroy the kingdom work. And why does this happen? Why does this happen? This could happen um, because of uh, immature responses. And we have talked about that, you know, when people are mm, uh, immature, like they, they haven't uh, uh, received the word of God and they haven't really let that work in them and they're still um, dependent on, you know, make, uh, they're still interested in uh, making their flesh happy. Okay? Uh, very immature. They might be the ones who actually engage in these things. So uh, we have to be careful. And even, let's say, mature ministers of God who have not dealt with character issues, okay, insecurities, we talked about that. right? In the long run, these things are um, dangerous because uh, just like Saul, he, he was, God would have chosen him, empowered him, everything. But despite all that, his insecurities uh, pushed him to make wrong choices. And then, you know, he, he was even... Um, willing to murder David and all kinds of things went wrong in his life. So it could be immaturity or it could be um, uh, you know, our uh, character flaws which we have not checked and worked on. Okay. Now the other thing that can actually hinder kingdom work is pretense partnerships. Okay. So what are these pretense partnerships? Um, again, this is unfortunate. Uh, people try to come together and promise that you know, they will work. Okay, we will do this citywide prayer, uh, you know, prayer program. Every year we will have uh, three events, and we will have uh, a couple of um, you know smaller, smaller uh, church level programs, you know, leading up to these large uh, events that we will do in this. Day. So a lot of plans happen. Right? In discussions, they happen, um, uh, you know, uh, among several ministries. But it's just for the sake of talking. Nobody really does anything. So what are these? These are pretense partnerships, okay, which don't contribute much to the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, uh, people sometimes are satisfied with these mere talks. It's just talking, that's all. Uh, whenever an issue arises, people gather together and discuss, huh, okay, we'll do it like this. These are the correct action items that, that will uh, um, you know, um, uh, really serve the people and all that. But nobody really does anything. Nobody really pumps in resources into that. Nobody takes the leadership to, to steer things forward okay, uh, with regard to that matter. So. Pretense partnerships, actually this happens a lot, okay, uh, and uh, nothing much comes out of it. So um, we must look for uh, 
concrete partnerships where really you know we have a heart to work together we um, as god's people we have a heart to see the kingdom uh, prosper and progress um, and uh, really contribute okay to to uh, make things better uh, for the body of christ um, in our region and or as well as you know the the country at large and and the um, body of christ globally okay yeah samuel and yeah okay so uh, i'll just take up uh, samuel's question i don't i don't know who asked first but uh, shouldn't we ask the question though to check if our intentions for partnership is in line uh samuel could you come again i didn't get uh sorry um, that's what yeah. what in it for me <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah, go ahead. Shouldn't we, like, so shouldn't we ask the "What's in it for me?" question just to be clear with our intention? Like, let's say I'm I'm partnering with a church, but I am asking that why am I doing it? What's in it for me? You know, why am I going into it? And it may not be for fame, but it may be like you know, uh, I'm doing this or I'm part entering into a partnership because uh, there is a lot that I can learn from this church. Mm-hmm. or you know there's uh, there is a lot that we could together we could impact a bigger audience so the intention may be correct but asking that and getting that clarified in the beginning uh, mm-hmm. i think is better than to avoid it altogether yeah yeah that's fine uh, samuel i think having our intentions clear and also knowing what might come out of it and if we are willing you know for whatever outcome whether it is um Mm, i mean let's say it's it's not really a, a you know I, i don't know how to put it but outcomes will be i, I think in ministries and partnerships it's not uh, quantifiable as such uh, right outcomes uh, so if you feel that you will get a good learning experience or you will build relationships genuine relationships with ministers of god as you're working these are, these are good outcomes that you're working towards so what we meant in uh, while talking about what's in it for me is to have a like a reward mindset okay um to kind of try to get something to benefit you in a fleshly way out of the partnership so that's what we mean good intentions and you know getting um building good relationships all of that is fine right right i mean i think rewards are good motivators uh, yeah, as yeah, long yeah. as those rewards that we are striving for is in yeah. alignment with uh, biblical principles like it's, it's like you mentioned not fleshly rewards but um, yeah yeah eternal rewards but mm. i think you know highlighting the rewards and chasing the right rewards i think would motivate mm. would would act as a good motivator yeah that's right yeah yeah thank you samuel thank you for that uh we'll um go with abraham's question next abraham you had something to ask yes please uh in line with what you were just sharing i mm. in every partnership Mm-hmm. there will be an influence at the end of the day one group will end up influencing the other group but mm-hmm. we consider the unity first before the partnership or we just partner without looking at the unity per se like example in vietnam we decided to pray for vietnam and the interest mm-hmm. we all had in hand was because of the covid so they all came together we prayed for almost about a week for vietnam but that unity wasn't there you know we all had a different perspective about christ church ministry but when it came to part- partnering to pray for vietnam we had everyone on board maybe the same thing with sickness or maybe so winning you can get thousands of christians to come together just to pray for someone who is sick or to fight something that the devil is attacking the whole church but once that is off you don't see that essence that unity that must connect us together I don't know if what I'm saying is really <laughs> is really making sense but my idea is that when it comes to partnership because we all have the same interest we can all come together irrespective of what we think or how we see things but 
Should it be so? Or it should be because uh, we have the same perspective about Christ, like the essence of who we are is the same before we enter into partnership. Or we can have different essences, I mean, different um, perspective of seeing things, but yet the interest will bring us together because of the influence aspect. Because I don't know the day, I might not agree with what someone else would do. You know, you might not agree with someone, the way somebody will lead a prayer, something that someone will say. So do we consider all these things or we just go into partnership without looking at these things? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, Abraham, that's a uh, good, good uh, thought there. Uh, see, as we mentioned earlier, we can't have everything in common. Okay, there will definitely be uh, uh, matters which will, you know, like irk us, which will, um, which we don't agree with. Okay, we we are very, we have a very strong opinion uh, about uh, certain certain uh, biblical truths. Okay, but but then you know when we want to partner with people, we can partner with people um, who we most mostly agree with you know let me just put it that way you know, mostly we we agree with with many things that they believe those are the kind of people that that it is good to partner with uh, and uh, things depend on the cause uh, abraham so for example if you if the churches in the city are coming together for something like blessing the city okay uh, bangalore blessing I mean, let's call this uh, this um, meeting citywide meeting as bangalore blessing the, the intention is just come pray over the city, bless the uh, government, bless the people and you know, things like that. Simple, very simple. I think depending on the cause, you can align with people. So for something like this, when several denominations come together, we may not agree, right? Maybe I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, maybe you have the, the, um, the uh, protestant groups coming in you also have the catholics coming in you have the pentecostal people coming in you have certain independent denominations coming in i think it's okay because at the end of the day you know you're praying for the city and there's not so much of you know doctrinal disagreement about that uh, i remember uh, in fact uh, here in bangalore we've had these these meetings that uh, apc has also been a part of mm, this was way back this was way back like 10 years or 12 years ago where uh, for a sunday service i recall uh, people had gathered in a in a large stadium uh, large grounds uh, from many different denominations okay and uh, everyone took communion together there were like hundreds and thousands of people you can't even really find your own uh, church folks over there so uh, things like that it, is it possible yes because we choose to uh look at what is common okay so what i'm saying is based on the cause now for example if you have a revival uh, revival gathering where our, our cause is we are going to pray for the outpouring uh, of of the holy spirit the baptism in the holy spirit right for for the city we want uh, god to visit the city in in this in this way then I may not be able to align with the uh, uh, believers who don't believe in the Holy Spirit and the works of the Holy Spirit. So then uh, you get what I mean, right? So it really depends on your cause. If it's a simple cause, which everyone agrees together with, then we don't have to fight about doctrine. We can come together, no problem. Yeah, so that's how it is. So uh, I told you about the power to change. Power to change was about evangelism. So most churches agreed that we have to reach the city. So there was not, you know, a big issue about the, the doctrine. People agreed and they worked together. So it, it really depends on the cause and you can align based on the cause. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, uh, Abraham. Uh, I think, yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, Christopher, uh, you're asking this question how do we step away from a partnership when we know there are wrong intentions or doctrinal differences in the other church okay um so christopher is 
is the partnership for a cause Oh, yes, it could be for a cause or it could be for, uh, you know, it could be for a program also. Mm. Um, and um, um, but as as it sort of progresses, uh, you know, into, um, you know, maybe you know, multiple sessions, uh, there are some, you know, fundamental doctor, doctrinal uh, differences, mm. uh, which can, you know, can be, con you know, contradictory uh confuse uh you know the people that, huh. uh, that uh you know that are being uh, you know that are re receiving the you know the the, the preaching and mm. there could be also wrong intentions you know which mm. uh which only surface later mm. yes yes so uh see christopher it's it's about the cause really you know if, if the judges are coming together to uh, let's say now COVID, COVID happened and uh, there is a need. One church can't serve the city. So many churches are coming together and the cause is COVID. Okay, and doc there, there's uh, no need to indoctrinate one another in those programs or in those meetings. So we all keep our doctrines to ourselves. Uh, when we have our meetings, it's only about COVID. It's only about uh, the response for COVID, practical matters. Okay, practical issues. Uh, so if it's like that, then I think it's easier to to continue with that partnership. Uh, but if the programs, as you're saying, uh, it seems like you know you have some sessions where where some people are sharing their doctrine. Okay, that can be problematic because then that brings division. No, not everybody agrees with what that person believes uh, on a certain matter. So uh, if you are part of the, the leadership team, again, you know, in this way, you could kind of talk to them and see if these things can be avoided. Basically, you partner on common beliefs and common cause. That will be fine. But if people are not willing to do that, and if there is uh, you know, discussion on doctrine, I think sooner or later, it's hard to stick to that partnership. Because it's it will only make you uncomfortable, and if there is wrong intention uh, and you're clear about that, maybe you want to. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you're uncomfortable about where it is going, and if it's not benefiting you, then why the partnership? Yeah, just some thoughts there, Christopher. Does that uh, help you? Yeah, I'm. I'm just thinking that you know, in in the course of uh, you know this partnership, as you know, there is uh, yeah. you know impartation of uh, you know you know the biblical uh, uh, you know uh, references, uh, yeah. even prayers, for example. Um, uh, you know, so for example, if if uh, within the within the different churches, there are there are prayers that are. Uh, to uh, you know, prayers to Mother Mary, for example, and um, um, that sort of you know contradicts uh, uh, the you know the doc doctrinal uh, beliefs of um, uh, you know the, the the APC Church. Then um, do we, does it still you know does it still merit having a continuing with the partnership? Because the audience itself is going to get, uh, you know, they're going to get confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah, Christopher, I think uh, we'll have to think about uh, what uh, Sam said. I was just going to post it. W I I F M question. What's in it for me with with regard to the right uh, benefits out of that uh, uh, partnership or alignment? Uh, if you feel that, yeah, you're going to like I said, COVID, for example, for COVID, we are working and there are some Catholics in that uh, project. Uh, and uh, while, you know, so we have prayer times, if they end up praying to Mary or something, actually, if you ask me, I would be like, you know, I wouldn't mind. I'd be like, okay, fine, you know, they prayed the way they, they know. Um, but we are in this partnership just for the COVID project. So it doesn't bother me much. We continue with the project, we get it done, it's over. 
Okay, so it really depends on the cause and what the outcome of that partnership is. Um, if you feel that it's more than that and it's bothering you, it's influencing, then yeah, just rethink why you are in that partnership. Okay, so just uh, some things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, so Harrison, I see your hand raised. Um, yeah, please go ahead. All right. Thank you. Um... You know, when I when I listened, you know, to Christopher talk about, you know, the partnership, you know, with um, churches, and at the end of the day, you, you look at the beliefs, you look at the doctrines. Mm -hmm. It is very important. And when we look at this topic, it's very, very sensitive mm -hmm. that we need to, like, you know, pay attention to details. And mm -hmm. I was, I heard you too, when you talked about, you know, agreement. Mm -hmm. There is power in agreement. Mm. And when, when there's no agreement, I feel there's no growth. And what mm. is the main reason you know, for partnering would be another question. So the thing now is that, okay, it's just like I, I, the church you know, I worshipped you know, with before. At some mm. point, you know, I started seeing the doctrines you know, conflicting with the word of God. I started seeing the doctrines you know, disturbing that it's more like you know when you go out for evangelism there's a particular set of people you are going to meet mm. it was so painful that's how bad it was you know that they give you a particular set of people to target mm. and for me they have shifted you know from from the course of evangelism and that really disturbed me. Okay. And for me, it was not healthy for my Christian life. Okay. And we want to like, you know, find out, you know, in such situations, you know, how do we really manage situations like this? Because, okay, you want to see how you agree, you know, to the common goal that brought you into, into partnership. But when you started seeing things, you know, going out of hand, how do you like contain such situations or how do you pull out from such situations because you know i know that at some point when i wanted to leave i met the pastor and i said okay i think this is where i would want to leave and it brought some disagreement i i stayed in the first time i, I spoke to him about leaving he did not permit it the third, the second time he did not permit it the third time he did not permit it so after the third time, I just pulled out, you know, without any um, permission. So for me, you know, we need to like, you know, look at, you know, who we are as Christians and see how we walk with God and not with men. Because there are sometimes, you know, you really want to pay attention to what God is telling you. Then, you know, what, you know, man is proposing. Otherwise, you know, we miss the direction. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure, Harrison. Yeah, thank you. So we uh, just have to be cautious about our own uh, spiritual walk when we are partnering with people and we have to be careful uh, if, um, you know, it. whatever we've signed up for, if it's not moving in that direction, uh, then I think it's okay to to opt out. But you can opt out in a, in a again, polite, cordial sort of work way okay and uh, uh, i remember uh, this was not when i was working for apc but you know at that time it was outside of apc there was a particular ministry that they needed uh, some help and uh, at that time i had just graduated from college and i had time so i started working with them um, but later on uh, i realized that uh, you know, some of their principles some of the values uh, were con conflicting with mine uh, and I was very strongly uh, averse to, you know, a couple of things that were going on. So I was wondering whether you know, I should I should continue working with this person. It was a very short, uh, uh, you know, engagement with this particular ministry. Uh, so, but 
uh, we had signed up we had decided on a program we were planning to do a program together and i was um, uh, to be the coordinator for that program and before that program i had this very strong sense that i want to quit okay i don't want to work, continue working with uh, this person anymore because i don't believe in the same things that this person believes and uh, I, like i was so sure about it that i i wanted to tell them right away but as i prayed i felt like you know i had already signed up for the program and they were depending on me to coordinate uh, an event so uh, i calmed myself uh, and i uh, had a chat with with the main person and i told them that uh, i would like to do things i mean i, I didn't bring up you know my my main issue with them and upset them or anything but i just said like you know i, I would like to move on there are other things that i i'm really interested in doing so they said that's fine but uh, complete this this event so i uh, served i served to finish that event completed everything uh, only then i left you know but i was in disagreement with the way things were being done for a while you know while i was still there so i'm just sharing one uh, way that it went in in uh, my experience we can disagree but then if we have collectively signed up for something and they're counting on us you know for that particular program or project it's if possible you know uh, it's it's good to do our part finish it and then kind of quit rather than you know making it a very disturbing um quitting so then it disturbs everything disturbs the relationship i am still in touch uh, in fact one lady was running it i'm still in touch with her you know and uh, we're on good terms so uh, we don't agree <laughs> again values we don't agree on many things but uh, we can still you know respect one another and uh, be friends so yeah so just uh, an additional thought tarasan because you talked about you know disagreement that uh leaving the, the the cause if if required okay so i hope uh, that's that's fine okay so uh abraham has a question here yes yes thank you okay Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Abraham says in Ghana, the nation used to invite the head of the Christian and Muslim council to come together and pray. Is this partnership too? We wouldn't call it partnership, no, Abraham. Hello, Mr. Not... <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm listening, please. Sorry. Uh, okay, I'm listening. You were saying something. Yeah. No, I I am not looking at this as a partnership. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because see, sometimes in public events it happens. They end up calling somebody from another faith and you from you know your faith, and then they just say, okay, that person pray, you pray. Uh. So if it just happens, that's fine. Uh. But yeah, if you're coming together. for for an event like this and i think now you have some movements also right uh, no what to call it uh, okay i don't want to name it but there are some movements where there is the unity of the faiths uh, where everyone is allowed to believe what they believe and still um, you know come together again that's not partnership and we, uh, we as believers cannot be a part of such things but pastor this is during maybe independence day ha huh. they will call the the traditionalists the muslims and the christians they will all come mm -hmm. and do the sacrifices and then once they are done i mean the whole nation everyone is there mm. so that is where i have a bit of confusion mm. yeah and it's yeah. very we, we do this almost every year Yeah. Oh, okay okay it's not like a sudden public thing where they no, ask no. you to pray no 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 it's a planned planned event yes please they plan it very well yes mm, yeah i i, mean, I don't know recently during the covid issue they invited these ah. same people to come around and pray 
Mm-hmm. The Muslims were there, the Christians were there. And especially if you talk about Ghanaians, the pastors that we see them as the ones that are doing well, they are the ones they invite. And then you see them sitting mm-hmm. on the same table with them to pray. So I don't understand, Pastor. Okay, uh, even I don't understand it well. I think I'll just leave it open for anyone else. Do, do you want to comment on what Abraham just shared? Anyone? Okay, I want to say something. This is so sweet. Um, for me, there is no partnership at all. That's mm. one. And yeah. we are not equally yoked, you know, with you know, any other religion. But when we look at it carefully, it's more like, okay, everybody's coming together. And if, for example, if the Christians, you know, are praying and they say in Jesus' name, would the Muslims, you know, say amen? So the thing now is that, okay, they give you the opportunity, you know, to pray on what you believe and you pray and that's done. They call the other one in and they give you opportunity, you know, to pray on what you believe and that is done. And at the end of the day, everybody will find their way. But at the same time, you know, when you look at it, it is something that can still bring peace, you know, to the nation where you're not biased about, you know, anybody's belief, you know, but you're giving everybody, you know, room and opportunity to to share and be part you know, of what the nation is building. So for me, I'm not looking at it, you know, as a partnership thing. But I'm seeing a collective effort, you know, to see that a nation is moving forward. Mm-hmm. So that's the way I'm looking at it right now. So when we when we say okay, the Muslims and the Christians and which other tri- or which other tradition or tribes, you know, whatever it is, you know, coming together to pray, we are not equally yoked. But it's more like they're giving everybody the opportunity to partake mm-hmm. in whatever the nation is trying to build. So as we Christians, you know, we come there and we represent, you know, who we are. So not partnering with the Muslim, but we come there to represent who we are. So that's how I'm looking at it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure, Harrison. Thank you for, for sharing your thoughts regarding this matter. Mm, uh says, one world religion is forming. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, there are certain movements, Abhishek, which are which are um, very clearly in that direction. Okay. Uh, all right. I I said um, I told Christopher that you know I would uh, talk about the question about the spirit being tainted. So okay uh, i'll read kennedy's comment and then go to that kennedy says i think difference is not enmity and at times we um pers- persevere and lead by example okay so in these common settings is that what you mean kennedy that we should we should lead by example and not create division Oh, okay, fine, fine. Okay, so we have looked at all the comments here. Um, so coming back to the question about spirit, soul, and body. So uh, you can look at the mentoring hour, um, the last part of that, where this question came up again, uh, because uh, I think it's First Thessalonians 5.23, where um, Paul talks about the spirit, soul, and body. Like again, keeping keeping them out of filthiness. So then, you know, that's the that that's the reference that I came to know about. You know, a little later after I posted the comment on the um, Google Classroom. So then I asked Pastor, what does he uh, have to say? Because in my understanding, it was just the body and the uh, soul uh, that was capable of getting corrupted or polluted by sin not the spirit but what pastor shared is pastor said that uh, it is possible for the spirit also to be tainted so uh, yeah so i said that it, it is not possible but pastor mentioned that it is possible uh, and he said that um, 
the the pollution of the spirit uh, can happen through things like you know pride the same things that we list out uh, as as uh, fleshly influences over the soul those things can corrupt the born again human spirit as well okay so that's the point which pastor made in the mentoring session uh, so i wanted you all to have a look at it now again you know i i am still a little um unclear because i know that you know like potentially the potential of the born again spirit is is um a purity like spiritually it's perfect now how does it get tainted i i'm still trying to understand that okay so i i am in um that phase but you know you all can can li listen to what pastor said and also read what i have written there and uh, yeah so it's i'm still trying to make sense of this class so uh, yeah i don't think i i can give you a definite answer yet but after listening to pastor if you feel that um the the spirit can also get tainted that's fine uh christopher is that okay yeah yeah you can check the video you can check the video and the comment right okay so i think we have uh, um come to the end of this section on partnership and you know we have uh, i realized that there's only two more chapters to go looks like we are going to uh, finish let's see let's see if we finish soon but the next chapter is about the city wide uh, church and how to work together as a, a city wide body and we will study about that in our next section so let's uh, pray and close for today again i would like to uh, ask someone to lead us in prayer please anyone no one is in the class okay i'll pray <laughs> yeah. all right let's pray precious father we thank you for this afternoon this evening this hour father i want to say we thank you for opening our eyes opening our hearts to understand your words once again especially concerning partnership and all the details father all we ask for is grace that we will know the truth so that the truth will set us free father we have some unanswered questions but we know because an ocean is within us that will teach us all things father we are ready to hear we are ready to listen we are ready to be corrected to walk in the way of righteousness to be children of god to live as children of the most high god father we thank you for today's section we pray that may you give us the grace to continue until the very end father we thank you for our pastor we thank you for all the students that your grace will continue to be with us that we will move and stand firm even in these trials in jesus name we have prayed amen thank you so much amen amen, amen. thank you abraham thank you everybody for Thank you, Pastor. Have a great day. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.